is Francis Wood McClenny. She was born January 22nd, 1942. She is the daughter of farmers. She is a descendant of enslaved Africans. She grew up in Chase City, Virginia. Her parents, Mary Watkins Wood and Ned Dyke Wood, enjoyed laughing, yet they were strict Christians. They taught little Frances and her two sisters and four brothers, Pearl, Bertha, Ned, Cleveland, Dan, and Bill, to share with each other. Growing up on the farm, they learned to share with others as well. And Frances and her siblings planted corn, cabbage, peas, tomatoes, squash, beets, and onions, and they raised chickens. The Wood family attended church every Sunday. Her dad was a deacon. Her elementary school was the church school. In the 1940s in the South, church schools were often the only schools Black Americans could attend if they went to school at all. After she finished high school, Principal McClenney attended St. Paul's College in Lawrenceville, Virginia. It was founded by a former enslaved man named James Solomon Russell, who later became an Episcopal priest. With the financial and practical support of white Episcopalians in the Episcopal Church, St. Paul's became known as the best school in the country for training teachers. While at St. Paul's, Francis pledged Alpha Kappa Alpha Incorporated, a service sorority for women. And she sang on their famous gospel choir, which toured all over the country. She also met her college sweetheart at a party. His name was Earl H. McClenney Jr., dad. They married and moved to Richmond in 1964. And this picture was taken when they got engaged. And Earl happened to be the son of the president of St. Paul's College. Like so many African-Americans of their generation, they were hopeful that with the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, their children would not have to face the same levels of di discrimination, even in Richmond, Virginia, the former capital of the Confederacy. The civil rights law supported by President Kennedy and signed by Lyndon B. Johnson made it possible for them to move into the historic Ginter Park neighborhood. Frances soon had two daughters, Madeline, the oldest, and Jacqueline, the youngest. She took them to Riverview Baptist Church, seen here, and she was one among the first group of women ordained as Baptist deacons. Like other black teachers during this time, Miss McClinney was handpicked by her principal, Principal John Clark and the school system to be the first black teacher at Ginter Park. And Principal John Clark was a World War II hero. Principal Clark won the bronze medal as a veteran and had to protect and defend Miss McClinney as a teacher. He was unpopular for a while, but he did the right thing. He was kind. Mom told us that some parents wrote dirty letters. Others wanted her to go back to Africa. And my dad, her husband, had to escort her into the building each day. Many white parents, however, believed in the quality of education and loved all people. They supported Mr. Clark and my mother, Miss McClinney, as well as other teachers. My mother always preached that love was the best response to unkindness, and she believed education was the way to advance for all people. She called all children, whether yellow, brown, black, or white, her babies. And raising two girls, she completed a master's degree in education. Her reputation as a teacher went through the roof when her students scored very high on standardized tests. She emphasized phonics to get students reading, and she mentored parents to have their children reading before kindergarten. As a teacher, we saw her on the phone every night with parents. As a principal, she took students home when necessary. And a lesson plan was prepared every day and customized for the needs of each student wherever she taught. 
There's so much more to share later about our mother, Frances M Wood McClinney, like how she made Ginner Park a model school. And she was clear that she had to make sacrifices and endure discomfort so that her babies would have a solid foundation in the world. She expected them all to succeed. And she's looking down now on one of them, Principal Anderson, as she now takes the helm of her former school. Principal McClinney would want all current parents to read to their children each night, help them with their homework, and to attend PTA meetings to support the current principal, teachers, and their students. She would do whatever it took for her children to succeed. And my sister and I, former Ginter Park students, are standing with you. We, the daughters of Principal McClinney, stand with the new Gator principal, Ms. Terry C. Anderson, and all teachers to invest in the precious students and parents who enter the sacred rooms and halls of Francis Wood McClinney Elementary School. God bless you.